Hey everyone, it's Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We're in a new month. It's November. And believe it or not, it's 70 degrees outside. Uh, so it's a little confusing temperature wise. All right, we are going to work on some new things today. As you can see, my new little office behind me. There's another project here that we're going to start next week. But today is all about new products and new projects. So hang on just a second. Let me find myself, open up the screen here. Oh, I love this. I can actually find myself for a change. Okay, um, and I gotta move things out of the way so I don't do something dumb like close out the screen. You know, I'm good at doing things like that. So, Give me just a second to get organized here. I know it's so much fun watching me look down at stuff. Okay. So today we are going to introduce a couple of new products. No, my table has not been oiled yet. So listen to the squeak. Sorry for the wiggle. Um, we have new products coming in for the next couple of weeks. We've got all kinds of interesting things happening. But today we're going to introduce you to two new products. Um, first of all, we have... Uh, Whitson's new gesso product. It's spelled G-E-S-S-A-U-X. It is similar to a casein-based gesso that used to be manufactured in Europe. However, the preservatives to keep the casein from going crazy uh, were so toxic they took it off the market. So Whitson's has developed this. It is an acrylic and clay product. It is fantastic. Um, it is designed to be used like traditional gesso that's made with rabbit skin glue. I know not everybody wants to make rabbit skin glue. God knows I do products with rabbit skin glue. God knows I don't. I want to leave the bunnies alone. So we love this product. Um, like traditional gesso, it can be thinned and applied in washes. It can be applied in layers. It can be applied thickly. It's sandable. It's carvable. And because it builds a film on it, you can use it for water gilding without applying bowl, uh, which is a clay product that's for, if, you're, if you've never water gilded before, it's a clay product that you apply over gesso that allows the gold leaf to be applied with um, a water-based uh, product called, something that we make called Gilder's Liquor. You've seen me use, make my own liquor, Gilder's Liquor with Veriglamaze to do it with water-based gilding, uh, water gilding you make a stronger gelatin solution. And, and that's another story for another day. But because this comes tinted and it is sandable and burnishable, this and it comes in these wonderful colors, you can actually skip the bowl layer if you want to, because this will compress due to the clay in here. And you can get that beautiful burnish shine on gilding. And of course, if you use gesso for other parts of your artwork, that sort of thing, works great for that too. The pro the colors that we're carrying it in currently is red, yellow ochre, white, black, and blue. Um, we don't have the blue in. It just didn't come in with the last shipment. They're still making it. We'll have it in next week. It is a royal blue, but today we're going to work with this red. And then we're, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm also going to introduce you to our new Roberson's Liquid Leaf. Um, now, you know that we've had Liquid Leaf forever, but as I reorder the things that you buy me out of, I try to add more colors into our arrangement. So this time we got Champagne, Aged Copper, oh, the squeaking on the table is going to drive me crazy. I have got to get down there with some WD-40, um, Fine Gold and steel gray. Now the steel gray is probably the closest to black that they make. It's gorgeous. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera down. We're gonna work with the Robersons and we're gonna work with the Whitsons today. We're gonna have some fun with all of it. Uh, I will check from time to time. I'm, if you see me look over here, I'm looking at my tablet to see if you all have any questions. And I will, as I always do, answer questions as, they, as I see them. Now. You know, it's been a minute. I did a quick live the other day showing you some stuff we were prepping. Today is a, my first real live in a month. 
Uh, we are completely moved out of the old space. We are completely moved into the new space. Everything's set up. Orders are going out. No delays. Everything's working great. Except that I keep finding random things, like my ring camera, sitting in strange places. So I need to... I'm still finding my way around into the new space. Um, if you watched our live, or if, not our live, but if you watch, have been watching us on Instagram and Facebook, you saw me yesterday in our new video studio. That is where we go to video things like shorts and wonderful videos that our social media people do. This is my little workspace where I like to do my lives. It's just between you and me, a little more personal. So we're going to uh, get into our projects now. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you. Yes, I've missed you too. I've missed everybody. It's been so weird. Um, until the day before yesterday, I did not. I had not painted anything for 30 days. That's probably not happened in years. Um, but we had to get stuff done. You know, the move needed to happen. All right. So we've talked about the new products. I've showed you the jars. Next, we're going to put the camera down sure that you all can see what I'm doing and this doorstop was in my studio um, if you remember the live the other day if you didn't see it go back you'll see it this was enameled it's from the 50s I primed over it with our Whitson's uh, super uh, adhesion primer super adhesion superior adhesion god I'm, I'm losing my words it's the end of the day I'll tell you stories as I paint why it's been such a strange day, but we're going to get to the products first. So this is our Whitson Superior Adhesion Primer that I tinted gray because gray shows these metals really beautifully. If I needed it to, I would have used this, then painted it black with set coat if I wanted to foil it. The reason we used Whitson's on this, but we used metal primer on the green man that we did the other time this was already painted. This already had enamel on it. I gave it a heavy cleaning and then a scuff so that the primer would have a, the, the gloss would be coming off of this and the primer would re, be bonding. So it already had a layer of bonded paint on here that I did not have to fight. I don't like to strip old things like this. A, I might damage the metal, but B, also, I don't know if there's lead in the products that we're using. So I don't want to sand that. I want to encapsulate that. So the next thing I did then, I was doing some short videos yesterday and we have tried some of our colors on here. I did them very briefly so you didn't, you don't see a whole lot of uh, differences in what I've done. And today we're gonna go back into it and I'm gonna work with you, with you guys watching and we're going to improve what I've done here. Uh, first thing we're going to do, this is all done in steel. The basket is done entirely in steel. Now I want to touch up a spot or two here that I missed because I was doing this when the uh, doorstop was facing in another direction and I couldn't see it well. So we're going to come back in here and touch up all the spots. Now uh, this is a reminder that when you have something textured like this definitely move it around. Get all the angles on it because you miss spots. And I knew I was missing spots as I was doing it, but it didn't bother me because I knew I was going to come back and do this live with you today so you could see more of me applying these wonderful, wonderful paints. Now, I love these Robersons. I got to tell you, the liquid metals, they go on like a dream. They have beautiful self-leveling qualities. They dry down super tight, and they are interior exterior rated so you can have it outside and they don't require a top coat because they dry that hard um, fun little bit of information about these that i found out that this particular line of roberson's products uh, was originally created by their chemist for framers um, because they needed a product that they could, if they had to go in and touch up a gilded frame and it would blend. Well, they made this beautiful product and it dried down so tight and so shiny that they started developing colors. Um, I am probably 
the largest retailer of their products here in the U.S. with the most colors available. And I keep adding to our color selection so that eventually we're going to have the entire color line in stock. So each time I refill my inventory for things that I'm sold out of, I go back and I add a couple more colors. So this time we actually added four colors. This is the champagne color and this is, you can see it looks a little beigey. It's truly like a warm silver color. It's just gorgeous. Uh, let me find some brushes here because I had brushes galore everywhere yesterday and now I can't find where I put anything. So I'm going to come in with something maybe a little smaller out of my pile over here. I do have a water bucket in front of me for a change. So here is our champagne. Let's see if anybody's got any questions. No, nope, not right now. Champagne is this beautiful, beautiful beige color. Now, if you look closely here, I may zoom in just a little, give me just a second to do a little zoom here. Uh, here we go. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to kind of pop that in a strange way there. Okay, so I hit that and it went off into a corner. So now you can see. If you look, these colors are very close, but the more beige one is our champagne color. So I'm going to kind of go back over some of these petals in this flower. Get all the details in. Now I'm not going to paint these solid, solid, solid. Right now I'm just putting what I call the background color in. I will be adding highlights and shadows and blending these and giving them much more detail than we're going to get just by painting them flat colors. But I want you to be able to see clearly just how beautiful these paints are. So I'm going back in and touching up the spots that I missed yesterday. And if I over brush and I get some in the center or I get some over here, that's not a problem. First of all, the pigmenting on this is excellent. So I can paint in here without it being a problem. Um, I can blend these colors. They're actually designed to be mixed together so that um, you can get uh, lots of options color-wise. And you know what I just did? Uh, this was, I was doing this the other day, so I want to make sure I get all my colors. I thought I messed something up, but I really didn't. So I'm going to come in. These are various kinds of chrysanthemums, and I think that these are supposed to be some sort of petunia or something. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to catch all these edges that I missed with the champagne color. I'm going to come in here a little better than I did yesterday. Catch all the details that I want to get in. Look how gorgeous this color is. Oh, It's the colors kind of reminiscent of um, Modern Masters warm silver, only it lays down way better and dries much harder without that gummy plasticky feel that some of these can get. Now, I'm going to turn this sideways just so I can see up close in a couple other spots. And this one was champagne as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful product to work with. And truly, when I'm blocking in colors for petals like this, I don't sweat whether or not I might over get a little paint over in here because I know I'm going to adjust that later and it will look better. Right, let's get in over here. sure I got everything over here. Like I said, I was sort of painting this in this direction 
so it looked perfect when I did it the other day. But when I turn it around, I can see all the stuff I missed by only go going in one direction. So always, always change directions when you have a textured surface that you're painting on because you will miss st stuff. Not you might, I, I just promise you, you will because you don't see everything. Look how beautiful that champagne lays out. That is super pretty. Okay, so now we're going to rinse this over there. We'll close that one up. Then we're gonna go in with our rich cop our aged copper. Let me find my brush to do that. Uh, let's see, what have I got over here? Uh, reaching over to my brush load on the side, finding all my little brushes. I got a lot of them. I just can't see them all from where I'm sitting. <laughs> okay, let's do this one. Here we go. Sorry, I scoot out of the way. Come back. Scoot out, come back. Okay, this is aged copper. Now we do do not have a true bright copper in our stock yet, but this aged copper is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Bright copper will come in, I think, maybe next time. Um, and the funny thing is, I see these things the same way you do sometimes on their website, and the color looks brighter, and then I get it in stock, and I realize, ooh, that's a little different, but it's still gorgeous. So it's this rich, russety color and I think probably as I go along to enhance it later, I might use our autumn gold, which is almost copper color. It's very pretty with this, I think. So we kind of clean up around here. sides of these blossoms that I missed before. And then turn it around again because there is always stuff that you miss. I miss on the sides. I missed some stuff on the sides. Not shocking. I missed a little bit right in there. Okay, so then the next we're going to do is use the fine gold. And I think I'm gonna take one of the brushes I used before. God, I gotta fix this table. The squeaking is killing me, people. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's use the fine gold. Oops, I'm not in the center, so you can't see me anymore. Sorry about that. Oh, my jar is stuck. There we go. Got it open. Now, here's something to note. The fine gold looks a little whitish in the jar because it's an acrylic, and the medium that it's in will have a whitish cast to it. When you brush it on, it'll look a little whiter and then it dries down richer and darker. So this fine gold will dry much ri richer looking than it looks in the jar. It's a beautiful color, beautiful pale, and it's not the same as their pale gold. Their pale gold is a little yellower. This is a little bit creamier. So let me just catch up all these little spots that I missed yesterday. And let's see. Here we go. There. Whoop, clunk. Cast iron loud when it falls. And here we go for more here. Missed a whole lot of little petals. 
look how pretty this is. I really missed a lot on this bottom flower. <laughs> it's too far away for me to see, I guess. So I told you I was going to tell you it was a chaotic day. I went to get my flu shot and, you know, COVID booster and all that sort of stuff done today. And because I am a genius, I thought my appointment was today at my wall, local Walgreens. And let me push this up so you can see. I'm trying to make sure I keep it in the frame so you can see what I'm doing. Hi, Desiree and Rebecca. And Sharon, thank you for coming in. Um, so I'm going to get my, sh my vaccinations done today. And I walk into Walgreens and they're like, we don't have you on the schedule. I said, I have it here on, on my phone. Here it is. Well, it was for a week from today. And they couldn't accommodate me today. And that's not their fault. It's mine because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I booked at another Walgreens, canceled that appointment, went to another one. Did my wait, wait in my turn in line and everything. As you see, um, some of my brushes fall apart. They're not actually falling apart. The paint, the enamel on them comes apart because I've gotten them wet too many times. Um, so I go over there, wait my turn. Make sure you're in screen here. And they hand me a whole lot of paperwork to do. And I said, well, I already did this online and they said yes but it's missing some information it was literally not missing any of the information i did online they just needed me to do it in triplicate i get my shots i walk out of there i come home i do some stuff at home then i go to the studio and take care of work there and i realize i've they never gave me back my covid card so I have to go back to the Walgreens and go pick up my CDC card and my receipts and everything. And then I realize that I have been to two Walgreens a total of three times today, and I still forgot to pick up my prescriptions. So I'm very proud of how smart I am today. And all I've done is run in circles. So let's get down in here. Look how beautiful these colors are. They're so pretty and they're so rich. And I'm gonna move this a little closer to me and I'll shift the camera angle so you can see. So the next thing I'm going to do is create um, some depth here on the basket. Now I haven't quite decided what other colors I'm going to use in here. So right now I'm gonna just highlight and work with the basket because that one I already figured out. Um, I'm going to take, let's see what I've got. I know what I wanted. Now I gotta find it. That's not it. I have all my other Roberson's colors next to me. So I'm gonna take, well, that's not the one I wanted either. For heaven's sakes, I know it's in here. I just had it in my hand. I should have left it pulled out. Oh my goodness. I am not really a smart person some days. Uh, come on, here we go. I'm gonna take my old silver and I'm going to mix it with some of the steel gray. Hang on a second, I, get, I gotta get the jar open. Excuse me. Now I'm doing this on parchment paper, so I'm literally just going to take a little bit of each paint and mix it right here on the paper. I don't need to uh, get more complicated than that. Now I'm going to use a different brush. So we're going to take a little bit of old silver right here making sure it's on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Normally I would do this on a palette or something like that, but I ha this is parchment paper, so I can do that with no problem. I've got my old silver. I'm gonna take a little bit of the steel gray because I wanna make sure it's close in tone 
The old silver might be a little warmer. The steel might be a little bluer. So I want to make sure I'm mixing some of that steel gray in there to make the color compatible. And I'm just mixing a lighter gray. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go and get all of these little highlighted cross pieces right here. Oh, that's funny because there is a spot on camera. The way the light reflects, it looks like I forgot to paint a spot and it's just the way the highlight is. So first I'm going to just do this, put in all these little highlights so we get a little depth into this. Later on, I'm, I will come in and paint this much more aggressively with highlights and shadows. But right now, all I want to do is just create a little depth in the color. God, the squeaking. I, I promise you, I will find the the stuff to the lubricant to make this not make that noise anymore. Oh my God, I'm gonna the, the squeaking sound is making me crazy. I don't know about anybody else, but that kind of stuff just makes me nuts. And I kind of went where I didn't want to go because I wasn't paying attention. I just started painting without thinking. That's happened before. So let's get all of this done here. And then I'm going to come in and do the base. There's little highlights. Now this is old, this is cast. So sometimes the lines aren't very well defined and you have to work with that. I love taking old things like this that you know, colors have gotten worn and faded and kind of distorted and giving them a new life. Um, truly, this is, I love old cast iron door stoppers, but sometimes the colors are just not what I want. And with Roberson's, I can apply terrific colors that will wear really hard for something like this. To, let's just do a little bit like this in here. Now I like this color that I just made, so I'm going to put it in the center of the flowers that I painted in the um, champagne color. I won't do it for all of them, but I'm going to put it in the center here because I really kind of like that color. And then I'll come in here and put some pearly highlights and stuff like that in here to make it more detailed. I don't want it just like blobs of colors. So I call this kind of blocking in color getting my background blocked in. Let's get this in here. because the parchment paper likes to slide a little. Hi, Janet and Lisa. Yeah, Desiree, it was a challenging day. Mm. 
No, I don't have a bird, Desiree. The, it's the table squeaking. It's making me nuts. I promise. I've got to find, you know, the one thing I can't find right now from all the moving is the can of WD-40. I know it's around here somewhere. I just have to hunt it down. And if it's not here in the studio, I have to go home and grab it and use it down here. Because the squeaking is making me crazy. I cannot, I cannot personally tolerate working with the squeak. Every time I move the table, it goes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be call this done for the day. We'll come back and work on this a little more. I'm going to introduce you to the gesso next. So let's put that to the side. I'm going to put my brush in here. I'm going to fold over this paper so that I don't make a mess on anything. And this is why I love having parchment paper in the studio. I'm going to open this up wider because um, our project is a little bigger. Now I got this cast bust. It's made out of resin. Got it on Amazon. It was not expensive, but I thought this would be fun to gild and it would be a really great uh, way for me to test my gesso. Now I've tested this on raw wood, but this is a new surface. So the first thing I want to do, and yes, I know it's pink. They, they make these things, they cut, I think this is their own sprayed on paint, which means I need to clean it a little bit. I'm going to get anything oily off. And that's just a little alcohol. Oh, the squeaking, I'm sorry. I promise I will get that fixed for tomorrow because if I don't, I'm gonna end up smashing the table. It's a different table than the one I had. We had we had a whole bunch of these tables and I just, this was the first one I grabbed and moved it back here and oh, I'm so sorry I did. Oh, the squeaking. Okay, so now I've done that. It's cleaned off. There wasn't anything really on it, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any leftovers. This little smudge is just from the Roberson's product that I just had. Um, it was on my thumb. Actually, it was on my finger. So we're going to take the gesso. Gesso will build up on here. This will probably be a couple of layers on here. Just to get it built up enough, I will then lightly sand it to make sure it's good and smooth and then we're going to try water gilding on it now not today and this is just to introduce you to the product this is gorgeous bright red get a little mixing stick over here give it a little stir as you can see it's a thicker product and that's because that is a mineral product that dries very matte and it's perfect as a gesso for gilding, but it's also great for gesso that, other, that you use as an artist to reprime your canvases and that sort of thing. Um, when I was a kid studying art in high school, we all just thought gesso was white paint. What we didn't get that is, is that it was not white paint. It is um, a thicker material designed to build up and either create or remove texture. Um, for gilding, you want a couple layers of it because this mineral then, when you, after you've applied the gold to it with um, Gilder's liquor, after it dries, you want to burnish it, which then compresses the minerals in here and allows you to get that super high shine that you see on so many wonderful gilded products like picture frames and um, statuary that's interior and things like that. Um, this is going to be my first time trying to water gild something with this much detail like the hair. I mean, I've done it on a piece of, you know, on some uh, other things. And usually I use one of our gilding sizes, like my Roberson's water base gold leaf size, which is perfect for many projects. But our Whitson's gesso product 
is a new animal for me and I am very excited to use it. I'm very excited to see how the burnishing goes. Um, if you were watching earlier, I explained that gesso for gilding is traditionally made with, if you're making your own gesso, it's rabbit hide glue and whiting and all that stuff. Well, first of all, I don't want to use glue made out of rabbit hide. Yuck. Um, so this is, this is not, no cruelty to animals. But they also used to make one years ago that was made with casein, which is milk products. Um, but the preservatives they had to put in it was so toxic that they had to take it off the market. Well, this solved all of that. This has got some acrylic binder in it without making it an acrylic plasticky gesso. It's beautiful to work with. I am loving how this spreads. And as you can see for red, in one coat, I'm getting some really good coverage. I think this is very impressive. I'm loving how this is going on. And it'll, I'll have to put a couple more coats on it because that's how I work. I wanna build it up a little bit to make sure I can sand it down and then burnish it the way I want to. I always give everything a little light sand when you work with gesso because the idea is that it, it kind of fills some texture too. So you can thin this down and use it in thin washes or you can build it up heavy and it is carvable, which acrylic gessos are not. You know, if you go to, if you go to Dick Blick or you go to Jerry's Artorama, they're going to have acrylic gesso. It's not the same as this. It's an imitation of true gessos. This is a gesso. This is wonderful to work with. Now, I had samples of this that I gave out at the Society of Gilders to people who water guild all the time. The feedback so far has been very positive. So I'm excited because I gave away all the samples, including one for me. So I'm really excited to be playing with this right now. I know it's hard to understand, but if you love products, getting getting your hands on something new and seeing how it works, this is this is my happy place. I think I'm gonna shift my camera just a little bit so that you're looking more at the statuary and less at the pile of crap on the side of the table. So I'm gonna write this and turn it around and then I'll lay it on its back the other way so I can get it the side. And then eventually I'm gonna to have to turn it upright so that I can do the back. But uh, right now it's just easier for me to lay it down so you all can see what I'm doing. But look at how good that coverage is. I mean, that's really, really red and this is only one coat. And as you can see where it's starting to dry right here, it's drying very matte, which is exactly what it should do. That's the the mineral clay in there that's really nice to work with that and that's what compresses in here um, to, so that you can get that really high shine using a burnishing agate which is a tool literally that has a piece of agate on the end that allows you to burnish your gilded surface um, it does not work on gilded surfaces I don't I, I will try it but to the best of my knowledge it will not work if I use um, a water-based you know our, our Roberson's or even if I used a, an, a, a gold size if I was doing any Morton gilding I would not be able to burnish it because the size interferes with the compression so this is really to get the compression that I want this is for um, water-based gilding however if you love this color and you want to make it shiny and look like shiny stone or shiny uh, cast clay and um, fired clay and stuff like that, you can compress this yourself with a piece of burnishing stone, you know, a piece of agate or something along those lines, and you will get a high shine on this. For those who are familiar with doing Venetian plasters, it's the same principle. 
It's a mineral product that once it's dry, you can come in and burnish it hard and get a hard shine on it. And it's really nice to work with. So I'm really, really happy about this. This is so, this is going on so beautifully. I'm very impressed with this. I have worked with all kinds of gesso products and this is just got a beautiful spread to it. I got to paint up her nose. Beautiful spread to it. There is some work time with it and then as it dries it gets that beautiful super matte mineral look to it. 